In this tutorial, we will see how dynamic web pages are created in Python. To create dynamic web pages in Python, we need to have the basic knowledge of HTML tags so that web pages dynamically can be created in Python. We will learn how to create a static web page template and then dynamically embed the data. We will also see a Python program which runs as a CGI script to retrieve data from the web form. To embed dynamic data into web page templates, we will use triple quoted string to create the template and then use the input function to dynamically read data from the user and have the open function to create a file which is generated dynamically based on the data input from the user. We will also use a web browser module and os.path module and import these modules so that once the page is dynamically created, it will be displayed in the web browser. We will also see practically how web forms are created and then the Python program which runs as a CGI is written. The Python program which runs on the web server has to be placed in a certain directory. We will create a web form and then write a Python CGI program to retrieve data from the user through the web form. And finally, the Python program will send the output to the user. Let us practically see how to create a web page template and then dynamically embed the data. We will create a variable content and this variable content will use a triple quoted string to create an HTML template. If you look, we have the HTML tag followed by the head tag and the title tag and then the body tag. In the body tag, we have a text as hello and then we are using a placeholder that is within the curly brackets, we are having str name as the string. And finally closing the body and the HTML tag as well as closing the triple quoted string. Since we have created a placeholder with the name as str name, we will use str name with the input function. The input function has a parameter enter name through which user will enter the text which will be stored in str name. We will create an HTML content variable which will be assigned the content.format and format takes in locals function which returns the dictionary of the local symbol table. In this case, it will return the value of str name variable. We will then create an out file variable which is used with the open function. This open function will create an HTML page with the name template.html and the second parameter is the write mode. Using the same variable out file, we will use a method write wherein we will write the HTML content to the output file that is template.html and then we will close the out file with the close function. At this instance, the Python program has created a template file with the input from the user. We will import the web browser module as well as os.path. We can directly use web browser.open to open the HTML file that is template.html. Therefore, in the open function, we provide the protocol file colon slash 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 followed by os.path.absolute path that is abs path and provide the file name template.html and close the function. Once we execute this program, the Python interpreter waits for the name to be entered. We will enter world and you can see that hello world is displayed. Hello was the string and world is the input taken from the user to dynamically create this web page. We will run this program once again and this time we will pass this is test page and you can see that hello comma this is test page has been displayed this is how dynamic data can be embedded in static web page templates in python we will now try to see how to create python cgi program we will first see the directory structure of a web server where the python web program will execute vamp web server can be used to execute python cgi programs Therefore, let us try to open the vamp directory. Inside the vamp directory, we have www directory. And then inside this directory, let us try to create a new folder python lab. Actually, the web servers provide a CGI directory in which python programs reside and can be executed. In this case, since we have created a python lab as the directory, inside this directory, we will create an HTML file. This HTML file will have input controls for web form. We will use the basic HTML tags to create this web form. We will look at the form tag wherein F1 is provided for the name attribute and method attribute uses get method. 
In the actions attribute, we will provide the path to the Python lab where the Python program will reside. And in this case, our Python program will be exec.py. We will have an input control that is name with the input tag. The name attribute inside the input tag, we will have it as sname. And then we will have another input control for password. The name attribute of the password input control is pwd. And finally, we will have a button with the type submit and name as bt1 with its value submit. We will close the form tag as well as body and the HTML. And let us save this program with the name form.html. Now we will create a Python program and let us try to name this Python program as exec.py. The first statement in the Python program is we will import CGI module. We will use a triple coded string create the content which we will store it in content variable. The triple coded string will contain two placeholders. One is the str name and the other one is strpwd. We will define a function with the name as main. Inside the main function body, first statement will be form equal to cgi.fieldStorage. FieldStorage is a method from the CGI module which is used to retrieve the parameters of the form. The next statement would be to create a variable str name which is also the name of the placeholder and assign form.getFirst. GetFirst method takes in two parameters. The first parameter is the name and the second parameter is the default value. In this case, we are using sname as the parameter and the next statement would be strpwd equal to form.getFirst and in this case, we are providing the name as pwd. And the last statement of the main function is the print content.format with locals function. This locals function stores the dictionary of the local symbol table. The last part would be to handle exception using the try and accept block where inside the try block we will call the main function and handle the exception through cgi.print underscore exception function. Before we execute this program, the very first statement, we need to provide the comment symbol followed by exclamation symbol and then the path of where the Python is installed on the server. In my case, the Python is installed in C program files, Python, the version of the Python followed by the Python's executable file. Let us execute this program through run module to check for any errors. We will now look at how the web form that is the HTML file is linked to the Python CGI program. In the actions attribute we have exec.py which is our Python program and then we have the attribute name as sname which we are retrieving using the parameter sname and then the attribute name which is pwd and retrieve as a parameter in the Python program as pwd. We will now open a web browser and type the path of the web server as well as the directory in this case it's python lab and the file name is form.html. We will provide the name as abc and some password and then click the submit button. We can see that the python program has executed which retrieves the value name and password xyz and sends back the response to the user or the web browser. Let us execute this program once more giving the name and the password and we get the values. Now suppose if you do not provide the path of the python in the command as the first line and execute the program, you can observe that we get an internal server error. If this error occurs, that means the python path not properly provided in the python CGI program. So make sure that the python path is correct in your CGI program.